Welcome to another episode of True Stories. Today's story takes place in Tehachapi Level 2, approximately 1996, maybe 1997. On a football field, there was an incident involving myself during a football game. The way it was arranged, we played dorm against dorm, and there were eight dorms on the yard. So when I first get there, during basketball season, basketball is not my best sport, but I can hustle. I'm like the Dennis Rodman out there, right? I'm not going to score you a lot of points. I'm not going to be a main factor, but I'm going to do the important things to help my team win. We didn't do a whole lot of winning, though. It was me, Taco from Inglewood family, Diamond from Fidus Hoover, Mark Moody, a couple other brothers. I want to say from San Gabriel but I, I, Valley, but I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on that. But it was about 10 to 12 of us on the team. And we had referees. If you're familiar with this story or you're familiar with this time period in Tehachapi, the homie Big Rick was a referee. And then you had this other dude. Oh, I'm not going to say his name or where he was from, but he was tattooed up. Let's call him the tattoo guy. He got tattoos on his face, tattoos all over his neck. He's sleeved up with tattoos, crypt tattoos, some cover-ups. Dude has a strong, solid voice. He, he's probably, he's like Monster Cody's size. Monster Cody's frame as well. And he's all about his cripping. He appears to be all about his cripping. Because he keeps a blue rag. He keeps it on his head, tied like Tupac. He has it ancient Miami style, you know what I'm saying, all over his head. Always saying cuz and crip, you know. And dude, is, he's running with guys that's not part of the neighborhood car. So he's not one of our own, but he is a rip. And... He, he's calling bad calls, and I'm like, what's up with the bad call? Big Rick called bad calls, too, but that's another story. Big Rick's the homie, and Big Rick was a dude you didn't want to mess with. But this particular individual, the tattoo guy, called a bad call on me, called a ghost file on me. I'm like, man, what's that? And he, he gives me a technical file. He blows his whistle. <laughs> technical file. And I'm like, wow, that's unwarranted. I'm like, for real, dude? And he's talking trash. He's the referee, though. He should set a better example. So after the game, I hollered the homie Monk, Big Rick, Moody, hollered a few other cats from Raymond. And they just, they don't like the dude, but they don't have no problem with the dude. They just say he's a loud mouth, always talking loud. But it appears to me that there's a lot of dudes on the yard that's actually scared of this dude. And he has that persona, he carry himself like he's all of that, and I'm not going to take nothing away from him. And, and so I talked to a few dudes from other hoods, and they actually want to get at this dude, but it's just verbal. It's unwarranted, so nobody get at this dude. This dude running around like he actually running the yard, like he take his referee job serious, and he incorporates that. Like he's running the yard. But anyway, this dude gets by unscathed. No problems, no issues. But now we arrange a crip football game. This is later on, because Mump and Rick and all the lifers, they're gone now. They got shipped to Solano and other prisons. But me and Moody's still there. The athletes are still there. As far as the guys that didn't have life sentences. So Moody and some of the other Crips arrange a football game. So we set this football game up, and you got guys from 29th Street Garden Block all the way to Ghost Town. For those that's unaware of the street gangs, that's Sacramento to Pomona. All of those anti-neighborhood gangs. We the neighborhood gangs. It's not very many of us. In fact, we don't even have reserves. They got Damn near three teams. They got a second string and a third string. We barely even got a second string. We'd be lucky if we had two reserves. 
So we can't get hurt, can't rest, or we're going to be short with players on the field. So on game day, I get up, go to the chow hall about 6 a.m., walking through the chow hall by myself. Because if you don't go to breakfast, you don't get no lunch. Normally, I didn't get breakfast or lunch. But on Sunday, scrambled eggs, French toast, sausage patty, I had to be there. I had to go get that. So as I'm bailing through the chow hall, I see this old-looking man with a gray afro and gray beard looking like Grady from Sanford and Son. I recognize the dude, but then I don't recognize him. It might be Frederick Douglass from my history books. I don't know, but I've seen this dude somewhere. So as I'm eating, I look up, and dude's staring at me. So now, all right, we got to have some words. So I finish eating, and I walk past him. And I say, what's up? And he say, Kev Mac? I'm like, yeah, who's that? And he laughs. It's the homie Lil Slip Rock. This is Lil Slip Rock's first day into Hatchby. So I tell Cuz, I'll see you outside. So Cuz comes outside. We talk. We laugh and shit. His hair and beard and grew out from sitting in San Bernardino County Jail for so long. But I tell Cuz about the football game we got later on today. Cuz say, I'll be there. So I go in, he go in. And now it's football time. We on the football field. Little Slip is on the sideline watching. Into Hatchby, the football field is located behind dorm one through four. It's basically overseen by the Northern Tower, Southern Tower, and the Western Tower. And so we can only play flag football. There is no tackle football, only flag football. So the tattoo guy is on the other team. At this time, they're on defense, we're on offense. I weigh about 157 pounds soaking wet with steel toe state boots on. Mark Moody is our quarterback. He's fast, he's smart, he can throw the ball, and he's the captain of the team. So Moody is our quarterback that we have to protect. We can't let them get to Moody because Moody likes to talk shit. He don't care who you are, how big you are, how tough you are, he speaks his mind. And he's gonna embarrass you if you blow a block, drop a ball, don't run the play correctly, don't run your patterns right. That's how Moody is and we love him for it, right? You gotta have a guy like that on your team, in your squad, to make sure you run like a machine. I'm Moody's Herman Moore, so I'm playing wide receiver. But on this one particular play, I'm asked to block, so my assignment is to block the tattoo guy. The tattoo guy, he's muscular, you know what I'm saying? Built like Monster Cody. Probably, he wasn't huge, but he was, he was cut up. And he did have muscles, he had chest, he was defined, very defined. And I'm, I'm like, damn, I don't want to block this dude, but he's smaller than me. And so my, my chest area, my stomach area is open to this guy. And he comes in and he hits me. And I'm like, oh, shit. I took that hit. Okay, cool. So now Moody wants me to block again because Moody wants to sweep. He wants to run the ball or option and keep the ball. So I got to block this dude again. And now I hit him like this. A little punk block. And I stood dude up. So now I'm like, oh shit. That working out, them dips and pull-ups, and hitting that 150 pound pig iron, it's actually working out for me. So now I see this and I feel this, and I'm confident in myself. So Moody calls his own number again. I gotta block again. But now I come with authority, and I'm like, boom! And I hit this dude, and I knocked him back. I knocked him back about two feet, maybe three feet. So my suspicions about my strength are real. So the next possession, we're backed up against our end zone. And Moody's going out of shotgun. I'm playing wide receiver. So I hit off the line, tuck, roll, and go out, run my pattern. 
after I hit the tattoo guy, he rushes in and he tackles Moody. So I go have a word with dude. I'm like, don't tackle my homeboy no more. This flag football. Don't tackle my homeboy no more. On the very next play, he rushes in again, and I stop, and I watch him, and he tackles Moody again. On consecutive plays, he done tackled my homeboy. I already gave him a warning. Obviously, he didn't take it serious. So I get in his face, and I two-piece him with no biscuit. I fire on him with my right, and then I hit him with an uppercut with my left. Down goes Frazier. I can't believe it, but at the same time, I can believe it. I put him in the dirt. After I lay dude out, I throw up the seat, and I yell across the yard a little slip rock. Nigga, that's how the 60s do it up in here. A little slip rock start laughing, and in a low tone voice, he says, you already know. Yeah, I know. Yard down. So I run about six feet and I dive into the dirt. It ain't like I got no weapon or nothing. I just got this and this right here. But I've heard stories. So I wanted to get away from the crime scene because this dude was laid out. Like, he didn't have to lay down. He was already laying down. And now when I tell you the Hoovers was on my ass after that. All this talk on the yard, Hoovers, Avalons, Broadway, all this talk on the yard about what they're going to do to Kim Mac. There was jokes going around. I don't even know if it was serious. But there was one dude from 40 Avalon that said it was real. And then you had Taco from Inglewood family clowning me at the spade table saying they're going to get me. Don't go outside. Next unlock is going down. So my heart's beating kind of fast, but I'm the type, I'm actually a scary dude, but I want to conquer my fears. So I, next unlock, I go outside. A couple of the homies come outside with me too. And I see the Hoovers coming clear across the yard. I'm like, oh shit, I don't have no weapon. I don't know if the homies got weapons, but they say, here come the Hoovers. I'm like, all right, here come the Hoovers, all right. But they pull up, they shake the homie's hand, and they reach out to shake my hand. I say, I'm not shaking no hand. Unless y'all mean it, unless y'all really got love for me, and ain't going to be no issue, I ain't shaking no hands. And they respected it. And so they shook the homie's hands, turned around, and left. So they sent a spokesman back over to tell us the tattoo guy don't want no problems. So I'm like, cool, you know what I'm saying? I figure it's probably on with the Hoovers, but dude don't want none. Dude's not from Hoover. He don't want none, though. All that Tupac with the bandana tied around his head and ancient mama style and tattoos and muscles. Dude hung his blue rag up. Dude found Jesus. The moral to this story is, if you get your body right, and when you're comfortable with your body, your mind is right. And when your mind is right, you can put yourself to do anything. I don't care how big, how bad, how tough a guy is, or what persona he gives off. No matter how tough a dude is, sometimes it's just an act. And sometimes a dude is not as strong as you are, or his heart is not as large as you think it is. Sometimes we create these own situations in our own head because we're fooled by the fictitious acts and we're fooled by tough guys falling for those fictitious acts. And now we think somebody is tougher than us, but the whole time we're tougher than them. So keep your mind right. Keep your body right. I, hey, just listen to me. But do as I say, don't do as I do. Because I don't keep my body right, but I try to keep my mind right. I walk, I exercise a little bit. So my mind would be right, but you always got to have confidence in yourself. I ain't no tough guy. I don't win every fight. But this one here was memorable because I actually thought I was getting into a squabble, but it turned out not to be a squabble. With that said, I'm out of here. I got a big mump story on the baseball field for y'all because mump didn't show up. I'm going to get my own mump story. All right, Mac Kids Maniacs, y'all take it easy.
Thanks for watching. Peace. Sitting reminisce about the day